In the last video, we created a console to visualize and test our Lexer. Now we are going to expand the list of source code that we can feed to our Lexer to tokens that have more than a single character. But first, in the Lexer video, I forgot to mention the default case for the switch statement inside of our get token method. At the end, add a default case. If we don't recognize the token, just return the illegal token type. Let's learn how to parse our ID tokens next. Remember that ID is the token type associated with variable names or function names. So I could have this variable here, where Flabinaba would be a token type ID with a Lexeme Flabinaba. And in order to parse this, we will add the following to the default case of our getToken method. There are a couple helper methods here that we will see in a second. But, if it is a character that we don't recognize, we enter our default case. Then we check if it's a letter. And if it's a letter, we call read ID to retrieve our lexeme. We will worry about determining the type in just a moment. Here is the isLetter function. And take note that this is just the ASCII alphabet, and you could extend this to whatever alphabet you want. It adds complexity, but not much related to the conversation of interpreters. Also take note that we are allowing underscore in the ID types, much like other languages do. Now let's take a look at the function readID. ReadID is pretty simple as well. We create and set a variable named pause to be equal to our current position. Then we enter a loop, and while our last red character is a letter, we advance our lexer. The loop terminates when we reach a space or something that is not a letter. We then return the string between the indices of the pause variable we created at the beginning and the current position of our lexer. Let's go back up to the switch statement where we call read ID. Now that we can parse the lexeme of the IDs, we need a way to differentiate them from the keywords of our language, like let or func. Let's add some methods to do so. The token class seems like the perfect entity to take responsibility for this. First, let's create a map from the source code keywords to the corresponding token types inside of our token class. Nothing much going on here. The key is just the source code that we would expect to see while parsing or lexing, and the value is the corresponding token type. Now let's write a method that will take a string as an input and return the token type of one of the keywords if we find it in the map. Otherwise, we will return the ID token type. Here I call it determine token type. With that complete, let's go ahead and finish the switch statement in our lexer and populate the type. Notice here that we have not only covered the logic for the ID tokens, but also for our language keywords as well, such as let, return, func, if and else. It is also worth noting here that we are returning immediately after building our token. This is because read ID is advancing the lexer with multiple calls to read char. This means that we will not want to miss a character by calling read char again after we exit our switch statement. Next, let's go ahead and do one very important thing. In our language, we don't care about whitespace. Our scopes will be defined by curly brackets as God intended. I'm looking at you, Python. So we need to skip whitespace. If you look at our lexer, get token will try to eat the whitespace character and end up flagging it as an illegal character. So at the beginning of get token, before our switch statement, we will call a method that will eat the whitespace. We're just going to call it eat whitespace. The eat whitespace method is no problemo, and this is it. While our next token is a whitespace, a new line, or a carriage return, we're going to eat it. And to keep these videos in small bite-sized chunks, we're going to go ahead and pause here. In the next video, we will cover digit tokens and two character tokens. If you want to get a head start, the digits are handled in exactly the same pattern we handled the ID characters, but instead of letters, we're going to check digits.